and welcome to a tutorial over empirical formulas and molecular formulas. Please have out your notes, a periodic table, and a calculator. The molecular formula for a compound is its true formula as it exists in nature. The empirical formula for a compound is the reduced version. Sometimes the empirical and molecular formulas are identical, so let's look at some examples here. Hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. That means that there's a 2 to 2 ratio for the molecular formula, which is its true formula. Well, I can reduce that to get the empirical formula. So, I can reduce that down to a 1 to 1 ratio, which is just HO. So, you can see that the molecular formula and empirical are different here. For carbon dioxide, on the other hand, the molecular formula, or its true formula, is carbon dioxide CO2. I can't reduce this, so the empirical is CO2 as well. So, here in this example, they are the same. So how do you find the empirical formula for a compound? You'll need the masses or the mass percentages of each element in the compound. Now I realize in your notes there's five steps that you need to follow to figure out the empirical formula, but instead I just memorized this poem, which is basically the step simplified, and there's a little chant to it that helps you to memorize it. So this is how it goes. Percent to mass, mass to mole, divide by small, multiply to whole. If you can remember that, you're going to do very, very well in this section. All right, so let's try an example. It says, find the empirical formula for a compound that's 5.9% hydrogen and 94.1% sulfur. So the first step says to go percent to mass. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to assume that I have a 100 gram sample. So by doing this, I can just cross out percent and put in grams. So that's always what you're going to do. Cross out percent and put in grams. Step one, done. Step two, go mass to mole. Well, I know how to do this. It's a one-step dimensional analysis. So I'm starting with 5.9 grams of hydrogen, and I'm going to convert this to moles using the molar mass. So I know the molar mass of hydrogen is 1.008 grams. That should go on the bottom so my units cancel, and one mole will go on top. When I do this and I put it in my calculator, I get... 5.9 moles of hydrogen. I'm going to do the same thing for the sulfur. So I've got 94.1 grams of sulfur, converting it to moles using molar mass. Remember, molar mass is found on the periodic table. I end up getting 2.93 moles of my sulfur. Okay, so that is step two, going mass to mole. Now I need to divide by small. So what do they mean by divide by small? Well, that means literally, let's look at our numbers here. Which one's smaller? Hopefully you know 2.93 is smaller than 5.9. So I'm going to divide both of these numbers by 2.93. Okay, when I do this, I obviously get 1 on the last one on the bottom, which pertains to sulfur. And for hydrogen, this actually will come out to 2. Well, what are these whole numbers, and what do they mean? These whole numbers become the subscripts in my empirical formula. So since the 2 pertains to hydrogen, it's H2. Since the 1 here pertains to sulfur, there's just one sulfur. So H2S is my empirical formula. I'm going to skip the second example. If you want to see how that's worked out, um, then you can go ahead and look in the green notes. Okay. Let's look at, my smart board's having some difficulties. Let's look at the third example. Go ahead and pause the video and try to do this one on your own. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you were able to do this one on your own. Now that last step, multiply to whole, is needed in this example. So you may have gotten stuck. Let me help you out. Okay, first step, we're going to go percent to mass. I cross out my percentages and I put in grams. So step one is done. Mass to mole. 
So I've got 25.9 grams of nitrogen, and I've got 74.1 grams of oxygen. I need to change these into moles using their molar masses. Again, you find these on the periodic table of elements. Okay, so solving this in my calculator, I get 1.85 moles of nitrogen, and I get 4.63 moles of oxygen. So step two, the longest step is done. Now I need to divide by small. The smaller number is 1.85. So I get a 1 for nitrogen, and I get 2.5 for oxygen. So this is the divide by small step. Well, this time I have a decimal. That's not a whole number. 2.5 is not whole. So I need to multiply till whole. Well, to get 2.5 to be a whole number, I need to multiply by 2, and it gives me 5. If I've done this to one step, I've got to do it to the other. So, my ratios are 2 to 5. So, I've got N2O5 as my empirical formula. All right, let's move on. Okay, so molecular formulas. You can find the molecular formula for a compound. You have its empirical formula as well as its molar mass. So, remember the mo molecular formula is not the reduced one. It's the true formula. So we can use the empirical formula to get us there. So first you need the empirical formula. If you don't have it, then you need to get it. So I just showed you how to do that. So you should feel comfortable. So afterwards, you want to find the molar mass of the empirical formula just by adding up the different atoms, multiplying it by their molar masses. In step three, you're going to divide the molar mass of the molecular formula by the mass of the empirical. Okay, now the mass of molecular should be given to you in the problem. This will give you a whole number. Then you're going to multiply the empirical formula by this whole number to obtain the molecular formula. I realize it sounds tedious. It's not as bad as you think. Let's look at an example. Ah, whoops. Here we go. <laughs> so the question says, find the molecular um, formula for a compound with an empirical formula of CH2 and a molar mass of 84 grams per mole. So I went ahead and found the um, mass of the empirical formula. When I add up one carbon and two hydrogens, I get 14.027 grams. So this is where you want to set up that ratio. Remember, you want molecular mass on the top, and you want empirical on the bottom. So I know the molecular is 84 grams per mole. And I should have put per mole here. Um, and then the empirical is 14.027 grams per mole. This is where I get that whole number. So when I divide, it actually gives me 5.98. It's okay to round up here. This is close to 6. So that whole number, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to multiply that by the subscripts in the empirical. Okay, so I'll take the empirical, which is CH2, I'll multiply those subscripts by 6. So what I end up getting is C6H12. That is your final molecular formula. So this is your answer, okay? It should make sense that your molecular formula can be reduced, and when you do so, you should get the empirical Let's try the next example. So take a minute, pause your video, see if you can do it. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you were able to do this next example. So you want to start by getting the mass of the empirical formula. It's 30.026 grams per mole. Just add them up on the periodic table, and they give you the mass of molecular. So molecular... Let me label these for you. Molecular goes on top. So the 90 grams per mole on top 
the empirical, so the 30.026 grams per mole, go on the bottom, I get a whole number. So it came out to 2.99, which I can round up to 3. I multiply that whole number by the subscripts in the empirical, so I get C3H6. Three. That is my final molecular formula. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you need more help, please seek the website and the keys on the website. Have a great evening.